another studio vlog. So this week I'm feeling totally in limbo. I moved house the other week. We've moved into a family members, so I'm just in this little corner. I have been trying to renovate the new house. I'm waiting for the keys to the office, so I'm really excited for that, but it's like just out of reach. But those are the negative things and I'm trying really, really hard not to focus on just the negatives. Really, I'm just being impatient. I know these things are gonna happen. We're gonna have our new house that we can live in and the new office. So I really wanna show you a little bit more about my life that isn't just this corner. So hopefully I'll show you some renovation works. I hope that's interesting to you. I know this is an art vlog. So I'm thinking of having a slightly more chilled out vibe to this vlog. I found some great new music and I hope you enjoy it. I'm gonna get drawing characters. I'm really enjoying the warm up sketches. Although I keep turning them into finished pieces because I end up liking them and then I wanna just go further with it. So let's get into the working week, which is gonna be lots of drawing and probably lots of ginny shots. Because when I go to the office, I won't get the ginny shots. So I need to make the most of them now. Okay, bye. office so that I can really get organized that's gonna be so much fun I can't wait to vlog it I started a list of how I'm gonna achieve the goals that I want to achieve because I was getting a little bit overwhelmed with everything that's going on and how on earth I'm gonna do the things that I want to do so I'm gonna talk and tidy uh, because the place is a complete mess I mean, Anyway, I'm very well aware that I'm complaining and I shouldn't be because I am so grateful for the things that I have, like just bought a house, I'm getting an office space. Those are really positive things and I just need to um, remember that. Um, by the way, these are wallpapers and I got them from uh, Homebase. So they were free. I maybe took a little bit more than I should have. Uh, they're great for backdrops and things. The only problem with talking and tidying is that I'm not a great multitasker and I forget what I'm saying. Yeah, I'm going to be on the not on the table, actually in the table, but there's lots of ideas about this business and box and everything. Now I feel like I'm just moving things about. <laughs> so it's 4 pm and I really need to get doing some renovation work. Um, I say renovation work, I mean stripping wallpaper. It's such a boring and tedious job, but it really needs to be done. So I'm gonna go help Derek because I haven't done anything today other than draw. So 
I shall call it a night and get to stripping wallpaper. Okay, bye. So we've started ripping out the kitchen. I took these doors off. <laughs> um, yeah, it's still pretty messy. We're actually gonna knock this wall down because at the moment it's just the boiler. So we're gonna knock it down and put the boiler in a cupboard. And welcome to the building site. <laughs> these all need stripping. Carpets are up. Let's see if Derek's actually stripping wallpaper. I better go get changed and help. Okay, I've got my work gear on and I'm ready to strip wallpaper. Okay, I'll speak to you tomorrow. Okay, bye. on Instagram that I thought I'd answer here while you're watching me draw. I'll answer a call on this one and then later on in the video I'm going to design another character and I'll finish answering your questions there. Um, so the first question is how do I get started with character sketching? I have no idea where to begin. Okay so this is a bit of a hard one. I honestly think it just comes with practice. Um, my main piece of advice would be to sit down and draw lots of face shapes. Uh, really study reference photos, focusing only on the face shapes. Then do the same with eye shapes, noses, lips, hairstyles. So you've got like 10 of each. Once you've got the hang of the shapes, start putting them together. Um, I'd never start with the eyes. If you start with the eyes, they're sort of floating on the page and then you have to kind of build around them. Um, I always start with the face shape and then add different eye shapes that I've practiced, change up the nose and the lips. And if you put together those different elements 10 times, you'll have 10 characters that all look different. The hardest part for me is drawing the same character in a different pose. I think it's always really fun to add a little quirk that brings out their personality. So recently I've really been trying to mix up the facial expressions and also get on Pinterest for some fashion ideas or add an object or something. Okay, so I'm off to Edinburgh today. I'm so excited. I've not been to Edinburgh in two weeks uh, since we moved to Fife. Um, I moved to Edinburgh about 10 years ago and now I live in Fife and I miss it already. So I'm off to spend the day with my best friend, Amy. Um, I've mentioned her a few times. She's actually more like my sister. Um, we've known each other since we were babies. And by babies, I mean our mums were pregnant at the same time. So I literally met her when we, she was about five days old. <laughs> so yeah, I cannot wait to see her. She's recently gone freelance as well as a copywriter. So we're gonna go out for coffee and brainstorm business ideas. So to the mini. We've still got boxes in the car. I didn't even realize. It's amazing what you can pack into a mini.
We went to this little independent shop and they had these earrings in my brand colours. I want them all. So, happy Thursday. My new ND filter arrived and it's on the camera right now. I didn't even know this was a thing, but I've been doing my research about how to um, improve the editing of my videos and the quality of my videos. Um, this is a really inexpensive brand, uh, Zomi. So I thought I'd give it a go. Look. So I think it, uh, it's meant to be like sunglasses for the camera, that's what everyone says. But I think, I wonder if I can, if I can take it off, how do I unscrew it? I don't necessarily want it to make it darker, but I think it's making the colours a bit warmer. It's not on properly and you can twist it. I mean I do like it quite bright but not like overexposed and when it's screwed on properly. Ooh. Okay. Okay and then you can just adjust it. I can go super dark. Making my laptop screen purple. <laughs> hmm. I guess I'll find out when I'm editing if it's really working. But yeah, I've got my morning smoothie. I'm trying to be a bit healthier. I know you saw those two burgers the other day, but apart from that, I've been pretty healthy. So I was just taking a photo for my Instagram stories. I'm really trying to post regularly there. And I'm gonna get drawing again. So I really hurt my neck, so if I'm like this, it's because I can't turn my head properly. I can get to there. This is the problem with like hunching over. Um, I used to get bad neck pain a lot when I was sewing like costumes and stuff. But for drawing, I, th I think I sit with my head tilted and forward and I need to stop doing that. So that's annoying me. But other than that, I am in a very good mood today. Yesterday with Amy was really good. I feel like I really needed to have a chat with her because she's really organized. She's very good at structuring herself. And I'm sure a lot of you know, being freelance, it can be quite hard to get the motivation to give yourself a real structure. You're not working in an office where you've got set break times, lunch times, home time. So you can either end up working all day with zero breaks or you can end up procrastinating and doing nothing. And with feeling a bit like I'm in limbo, I feel like I've been unmotivated and not getting stuff done. So I was having a chat with her about a schedule and she's going to help me come up with a daily routine that I can actually give myself a bit more structure. I think when I get the studio space, it might be easier to stick to that structure because I won't be at home. I'm going to give myself a time that I need to be in work and a time that I go home and let's see if I stick to it. And the schedule will also be for product launches. So things like Christmas that's coming up, I really need to get organised for that and work out when I want to launch my Christmas collection, my Halloween collection and then maybe work backwards. So 
if I know the date that I want to do the launch, I need to know when I need to get the designs finalized, when things are going to be in production, uh, so when I need to actually start designing, uh, when I need to start the ideas for what I want to design. Um, yeah, I think if I work backwards that way, I can set out a plan for the next few months rather than just taking every day as it comes and thinking, oh, I fancy doing this today, but not really having a clear idea of my goals. I also want to try to post more frequently to Instagram so that that Instagram algorithm doesn't hate me. The positive of that is that I think it will make me draw more. And the more drawings I have, the more illustrations I do, the more products I'm gonna have for my shop. And also the more my style and my skill level is gonna improve. So I'm gonna get drawing my next character. And while I'm doing that, I'm gonna answer some of your questions from Instagram. Okay, to the iPad. So I'm going to carry on answering your questions here because there were so many great questions. I haven't been able to answer them all, but hopefully the ones that I have answered you'll find interesting as you watch me draw. Sorry if I've missed this, but how did you come up with your brand name? Honestly, I went back and forth with Fizz and Flourish so much. I basically wrote down words that I liked the sound of. They were totally random words, but if you like the sound, write it on a list. Um, something else I tried was picking a word that was related to what I do, so like drawing for example, and then I looked up what that word was in my favourite language. Um, I really love Japanese and Cantonese, and I would see if the sound was something I liked. So I'd also write all these words in my phone just whenever it popped into my head, so you know when I was out and about. Um, and I eventually decided that I really wanted an alliteration, so that's when uh, Fizz and Flourish was formed. It, it just sort of um, clicked. One thing um, to bear in mind is that before Fizz and Flourish, I did have a handful of names that I absolutely loved, but it turned out they were already a business name of some sort, which is absolutely heartbreaking when you think you found the one. <laughs> Um, so really, really, really do your research and check if the name is copyrighted. I was really lucky that Fizz and Flourish was nowhere on the internet that I could find um, and I could get all my handles without adding any dots or underscores, which was something I really, really wanted. Can you post a step-by-step -step tutorial using only Procreate default brushes? Oh my gosh, yes. I would love to do this. Um, I only recently started adding brushes to Procreate and you can for sure get great techniques out of the default brushes. So that is an excellent idea. I would love to do that. Maybe that will be in the next couple of weeks. So the next question, will you show your new house in the vlogs? Love a fixer upper. Yes, after my little changing rooms intro in last week's vlog, loads of people have messaged to say that they'd love to see more. So I'm gonna give the people what they want and film little bits here and there. Uh, don't worry, it's not gonna turn into a DIY how to strip wallpaper vlog. Um, I just wanna add snippets of what I've been up to because honestly, it's taking up a lot of my time. So I guess it makes sense to add bits into these vlogs. Okay, self-marketing techniques. Uh, I'm definitely not an expert by any stretch of the imagination, um, but the past six months, I've managed to grow my Instagram to nearly 1500 followers, which I guess is pretty fast for just starting out. Um, my main thing that I've noticed is that when I'm active on Instagram, that's when my following grows. When I first started, I would schedule posts and then just kind of sit back and let Instagram do its own thing. So that wasn't really working. And so I stopped doing that. And since then I've been posting more in the moment, which has meant that my engagement is higher because I'm commenting on the posts and chatting to followers, etc. cetera. Um, by engagement, I mean, if you see artwork that you like, don't just give it a love heart, go comment on it and be positive. Say something nice about the piece. Um, Instagram will eventually see that you're active and promote your own stuff more. So next question, how long have you been working solely on Fizz and Flourish? Uh, so I created the Instagram in February this year, I think. So 2020, which was about six months ago. Um, I wasn't 
solely working on Fizz and Flourish then though, I was spending those first few months drawing in my spare time because uh, I was working full time in China, in Macau. Um, I've always loved to draw, so drawing wasn't new, but illustrating was new. Um, I used to draw more realistic portraits just for fun, like the one I'm going to pop on the screen now. Um, but since I've got back from China in March, obviously there's been no theatre work for me, so I've been focusing 100% of my time on Fizz and Flourish. Um, I knew back in February that that was going to be my plan anyway, so the virus wasn't really the thing that made me make the time for it. It just happens that being forced to stay at home made me be a lot more productive than I think I would have been. Um, I've always worked freelance as a costume maker, so freelancer life didn't really scare me. So it's not like I quit my job or anything. Um, I guess I've been working on Fizz and Flourish solely since mid-June, so that's about two months now? Is that all? Two months? Two and a half months? Um, wow, I, I honestly thought it was longer, so maybe I should stop stressing and um, give myself a pat on the back instead of stressing all the time that I'm not achieving the goals because that's not that long. <laughs> what motivates you to draw? Honestly, I just love drawing, um, but I found that if I'm in the mood to draw, I just need to go for it and put other things aside because if I try and draw when I'm just not in the mood, it never turns out great. I don't really know how else to describe it, but just feeling in the mood to draw <laughs> Is what my motivation is. So it's Friday and I'm currently editing my video. I totally forgot to say goodbye. I am dressed super cozy because it's all rainy outside so I'm feeling like a cozy jumper. I hope you enjoyed the question and answer and didn't get bored. If you made it to the end of this video thank you so so much. I know it was a bit of a long one but there were so many great questions. I didn't have time to answer them all because the video would have been about an hour long. So what I'm going to do is go onto my Instagram stories and answer the rest of the questions there. So you can find my Instagram in the description below if you want to have a look at that. I'll add it to my highlights. And I better get back to editing before this video turns into a 40 minute vlog. So as I said, if you made it to the end, I'm obviously doing something right. So go hit the subscribe button and like this video and help this business to grow. And I'll see you next week for another studio vlog. Okay, bye.